Hey, my name is Dr. Brendan McCarthy. I'm the Chief Medical Officer of Protea Medical Center in Chandler, Arizona. For now, I am moving to Tempe. Super excited about it. It's the uh, biggest move of my career. Anyway, hey, did you know carnivore diet gives you diabetes? <laughs> I told Justin, we're going to leave with that one. And it's going to be clickbait. That's what we're doing. I'm just kidding. I'm not really. Actually, I'm serious. As, uh, <laughs> this is... You know, of all the things, it's like um, talking to vegans about meat, you know what's going to happen. So we just don't talk to vegans about meat, right? You know, it's better now. I know a lot of vegans that just, they're they're very cool, very laid back, kind. It's all good. But remember militant vegans? Dude, I mean, there's no difference between a militant vegan and a militant carnivore. Zero difference. Same. Just switch their words from meat to vegetables. They'll just switch them. It's the same kind of absolutism that just has nothing to do with medicine, has more to do with just personal stuff that we're working through. And so, um, yeah, there's a lot of that out there. I've done an episode on carnivore before, and of all the episodes I've done to get some weird responses from people, that was the one. And, and I was hesitant to do another thing about carnivore again, but then I thought, you know, why not? It's fun. You know, it's, all, it's all fun. It's not really fun. That's not true. Let me be honest with you. There's not a diet out there that I haven't tried. I even did raw diet once. And I nearly killed myself trying to sprout my own beans into eat, eating the sprouted beans. Yeah, that was, there was so, I got so sick. My wife and I, we thought we were going to die. I think we got E. coli from it. I don't know. This is way before I was a doctor. This is young. I was younger years. And um, the thing about navigating these extreme diets, because they are extreme, navigating an extreme diet can lead you down dark roads in your health. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do them. As a physician, as a care provider, as a human being, I want you to be well. That's it. That is it. It doesn't matter how we get there together because the tools I use justify themselves. If I'm using a tool and you get overall well with it, there's nothing wrong with the tool. Now, if I use a tool that makes you worse off, there's something wrong with the tool and you didn't get well. If I use um, like, I don't know, what was that one diet people were doing? Like grapefruit diet. I think it was a grapefruit diet that was popular for a while. If I put you on a grapefruit diet where you just ate grapefruits all the time, all day, every day for weight loss, I didn't make you well. You may have lost weight, but that's, that's not making you well, okay? It's not a good thing to do because the consequences are significant. So when I say I want you well, I don't care how I get there with you because getting well means what I used also made you well. It justifies the ends, justify the means in these situations. I know this sounds absolute, but bear with me on this. That whole grapefruit thing, keep that in the back of your mind. So if I use a therapy to improve your wellness and it worked and you are better off from it with no consequences for the therapy I gave you, no one was harmed in the use of this medicine. This medicine helped you get to that place. And it could be a diet, a lifestyle, whatever it is. If I got you to A to B and you're better from it, we're good. The medication has been validated. Now, most medications that are used clinically have been tested by their government regulators. And so we know when I write a prescription, it's safe within certain terms, as long as I do correctly and safely. So we're good. Other things, not so much out there, like diet, herbs, and supplements. They could be a little more dicey here and there. But still, I would argue the ends justify the means. If I gave you a supplement that improves insulin sensitivity and you got better from it, we did a good job. If I gave you something that was a, a, a unhealthy, you had negative impact from the medication, and, and you got worse, and then you got better, but you saw this lingering side effect over here, not better. Okay? So... I just said a lot of unnecessary stuff, it seems, but it is because the diet is just like that too. You're going to do a carnivore diet. Sounds extreme because it is just like going all vegan. It's extreme. When you do these diets on your own, you run the risk of a micronutritional deficiency. Anybody who has a carnivore diet who doesn't admit that is out of their minds. And they're probably like, you know, crazy. 
because you see them. They have these wide-eyed videos they make. Justin's looking at funny. Uh, Justin, right now, while we're doing this, is watching funny uh, uh, carnivore videos with people's eyes just wide, like, God, eat the meat. This is the steak. You know those ones? Them. And then there's the other vegan ones where they're just, just as crazy, wide-eyed. You can't eat animals. You have to... It's just the same insanity. And even though there's insane people on both of these diets pushing them, all right, I'm not against either of them. I'm, just, I'm against the insanity. I'm not against the diet. There are times when a carnivore diet will suit a patient, absolutely. And I've seen it and I've done it, but it is a heavy lift as a doctor. Why? Because the chances of micronutritional deficiencies jump. And that is a fact. The study that I'm going to have Justin put up here, that's going to be about potassium, potassium salts and potassium, shows that patients who eat a high-protein diet, studies show those patients end up having a higher risk factor for developing type 2 diabetes in their lives. Why is that? Because when you have these micronutritional deficiencies, you run the risk of developing diabetes. We know that high carnivore diets or high protein diets are going to cause a net increase in cortisol secretion, which will cause more insulin to be lying around. You're like, Brennan, protein doesn't increase insulin. Uh, it actually does. It does. The insulin index of foods lists many proteins, chicken, beef, fish, all of these secrete, your body secretes insulin when you eat those proteins. That's an unarguable fact. So when you eat those proteins, you're going to increase your insulin a little bit, right? But the problem is if you're eating all insulin all the time, excuse me, all protein all the time, your pancreas, excuse me, your body, your pancreas secretes more insulin. And not just that, but then your adrenal gland will start secreting cortisol as well. And that cortisol causes you to secrete even more insulin. This is a proven fact. The studies don't lie. So then you'll say, Brendan, why is it then that people do a carnivore diet have a net benefit on their insulin. Most times when they're doing it well, the key in here is they're doing it well. You've got to be on top of your electrolytes when you do a carnivore diet. You've got to be on top of your micronutrition when you're on a carnivore diet. This is not arguable. That is not an arguable thing. That's a fact. So if you are eating a carnivore diet, I am a firm believer in either having a, what they call a carnivore coach there are carnivore coaches out there. Isn't that crazy? They're carnivore coach. <laughs> Who comes up with these things? This is, but that is a thing. And then there's the, um, there should be vegan coaches out there. I tried doing a vegan diet once and I almost died. The doctors I work with, Brittany and Michelle, looked at me like, you can't keep doing this. We're worried about it. They had an intervention to stop me from trying. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do vegan for a month and see what it's like. And I'd done vegan when I was younger. I was like, yeah, I'll try it again. I did not work well. And I'm a doctor. I know nutrition inside and out. It's what I do for a living. I didn't do it well. So having a coach is not a bad thing. And, and I, I advise against doing these things without one, or at least someone to guide you. The best would be having a doctor. And I know I say that because I am a doctor, but I also know it's hard to get a doctor who's going to run labs and care about you. That's not lost on me. But I would say if you choose to go down that road, any dietary road, Avail yourself as much as you can of the information around it that's healthy, that explains it clearly, understandably. If it's a vegan diet, if it's a, a, a carnivore diet, as I mentioned, the more information, the better to make it safe for you. What if the thing that cures your autoimmunity was a carnivore diet, but the way that you executed it made it where it was not sustainable and you got worse from it, so you stopped doing it? It would have been better if you were able to do that carnivore diet with a coach or someone who knows what they're know what they're doing to guide you on that diet. Same with a vegan diet, like me. I, I know all this stuff about food. I should be great at it. I actually probably should have had a coach that whole time trying to do a vegan diet to guide me on my protein take, making sure I get it balanced. I'm sure I was missing something because man, I was not thinking clearly for a good two weeks. Not 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 good. <laughs> not good. So. I know there'll be people who say a lot of weird things about this episode, but I don't think we can argue with the fact that it's never wrong to get more information about what you're doing and do it safely. I think even seasoned carnivores will tell you and seasoned vegans will tell you, you really need to spend time to understand it, to do it right, to give it justice. Because these diets are powerful tools. 
all di diet is the most powerful tool we use in medicine, in my opinion. It's critical to do it right, especially when it's so far away from what you normally do. I hope this helps. If you've done a carnivore diet and it cured you, send me a message. Send it in the real comment below. Tell us where it was good for you. If it wasn't good, tell us why and tell us what happened. If you did a vegan diet and you felt like me, like you're going to die, tell us, <laughs> what were you eating? What happened? And, 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 and write in the comments below. I'd be curious. And I love these things because you guys start to talk to each other. And maybe we can make a detente between the vegans and the carnivores. We can have them come together finally and, and, and <laughs> be friends. <laughs> Probably not. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you at the next episode.